Did you know that your mind has the power to shape your entire life? If you want to break free from stress, overwhelm and overthinking, you need to master the art of mental discipline. The best way to take control of your thoughts, emotions and reactions is through Stoic philosophy, a time-tested approach that has helped some of history's greatest minds remain calm and resilient in the face of adversity. Avoid this mistake if you don't learn how to train your mind, you'll always be at the mercy of your circumstances. In this video, we're diving deep into how you can cultivate inner peace, mental strength and clarity through simple yet powerful practices. Stick around, because the insights you're about to discover could change the way you handle every challenge that comes your way. Number 1. Visualize your overthinking as an external force. We all know that feeling, don't we? The rush of excitement when a new idea strikes. You're about to launch into something big and you're filled with energy. At first it feels thrilling, right? You're brimming with ideas, brainstorming, making plans and envisioning how things will unfold. But then, as quickly as that excitement came, the floodgates open and before you know it, you're drowning in thoughts. What if this goes wrong? What if I miss something important? What if they don't like my idea? Overthinking takes over, and that initial spark of enthusiasm fades into a spiral of doubts. It's almost like an external force, something beyond your control, isn't it? You're still there, still in your body, still thinking, but your mind feels like it's a separate entity, pulling you in a million directions. You can feel that tension creeping in, making it hard to focus or take action. Overthinking isn't just about being stuck in your head. It's like an intrusive, overbearing voice that keeps whispering what could go wrong, what's not perfect, and what should be done differently. The more you try to push it away, the louder it becomes, until it consumes your thoughts entirely. Here's the shift. What if we could start viewing overthinking not as a part of us, but as an external force? Picture it like a cloud that has momentarily blocked out the sun. You can't make the cloud disappear, but you can change how you interact with it. If you imagine overthinking as something outside of yourself, it suddenly becomes easier to detach from it. It's not you, it's something happening around you. This subtle shift in perspective can empower you to regain control of your thoughts. Looking back, have you ever had that experience in school or in your early career when you found yourself consumed with the fear of failure? Maybe it was preparing for a big exam or launching that first major project. You were so focused on every tiny detail that it paralyzed you. It's nostalgic because in those moments, you didn't realize that you could have controlled the way your mind worked by simply reframing the narrative. The idea that overthinking could be seen as an external force, not part of you, is powerful. It allows you to detach from it and take a step back. Imagine if, instead of becoming lost in that mental maze, you could see the overthinking as just a noise, a distraction that will pass. Now think about the long-term impact of adopting this mindset. What would it feel like to finally quiet that constant chatter in your mind? What if, instead of wrestling with your thoughts, you could simply observe them as they come and go, knowing they don't define you? What would it mean to be in control, not of the noise itself, but of how you respond to it? That's the curiosity we should dive into. By recognizing that overthinking isn't a permanent part of who we are, we free ourselves from the need to control every thought and emotion that arises. It's not about suppressing the noise, it's about learning how to let it pass, leaving us with clarity and calm. So, let's explore how we can shift from being a prisoner to overthinking, to being the master of our mental space. Number two. Take control by refocusing your energy. How many times have you found yourself in a mental fog, feeling like you're drifting aimlessly, 
caught in an endless cycle of unproductive thought. You start your day full of energy, but then something happens, something small. Maybe you check your phone and suddenly your mind begins to wander. Thoughts about the future, the past, what you should be doing, what you didn't do, all start to pile up. At first it's easy to brush off, but soon enough, you find yourself stuck in that spiral, unable to refocus. It's frustrating, isn't it? You know you've got things to do, goals to accomplish, yet here you are, mentally paralyzed. But here's the thing, overthinking doesn't just happen on its own, it's the result of our energy being scattered. We're constantly bouncing from one thought to the next, never fully committing our focus to any one thing. It's like trying to read a book while watching TV and checking your social media all at once. Your attention is divided, and as a result, nothing gets your full mental energy. The key to overcoming this is simple, yet profound. You must refocus your energy. Imagine a time when you were deeply engrossed in something, a moment when you were so focused, you lost track of time. Maybe it was a project at work, or a personal hobby that you're passionate about. When you're truly focused on something, all those scattered thoughts fade away and your mind becomes clear. That's the power of refocusing your energy. It's not about ignoring your thoughts or forcing yourself to stop thinking. It's about redirecting your mental energy towards something that brings you clarity and purpose. Think back to a time when you accomplished something you were proud of, whether it was finishing a big project, mastering a new skill, or even something small like organizing your space. When you were in that flow, were you overthinking? Probably not. You were focused, present, and applying your energy towards a clear goal. That's the nostalgia we can tap into. Remember that feeling of getting things done. Refocusing your energy brings you back to that state where progress feels effortless. Curiously, what would happen if you made refocusing your energy a habit? How much more productive would you be? How much less time would you spend in that mental fog? Imagine being able to switch from scattered thinking to laser-sharp focus at will. This isn't about being perfect or eliminating distractions entirely. It's about creating a space in your mind where you can return to focus quickly and efficiently. We all have moments of distraction, but it's in those moments that we have the power to shift. So let's explore how we can take control by refocusing our energy and find out how this simple practice can transform our daily lives. Number three, embrace impermanence and practice. Letting go. Doesn't it feel like life is constantly changing? One moment everything is going smoothly and the next, things seem to shift without warning. It's easy to get caught up in the ebb and flow of life, to resist the changes, to want things to stay just the way they are. We've all had those moments where we wish we could freeze time, hold on to what's good, or somehow keep things from slipping through our fingers. The truth is, change is inevitable. But the good news is that embracing this impermanence can bring peace, rather than stress. Think about how often you've tried to hold on to something, a job, a relationship, or even an identity. You might have invested so much energy into these things that the thought of letting go feels like a loss. But here's the paradox. The more tightly we hold on, the more we suffer. Letting go isn't about giving up or abandoning what's important. It's about accepting that nothing in life is permanent, and that's what makes the present moment so precious. The things we love, the people we cherish, they are all fleeting in one way or another, but this impermanence gives life its depth and urgency. If everything lasted forever, would we really appreciate it as much? Think back to a time in your life when you struggled with letting go. Maybe it was an old friendship, or a career path that no longer served you. At the time, it felt almost impossible to move on, right? There was a sense of grief or loss that came with it. But as time passed, did you notice how, over time, 
the pain of letting go faded. You may have even found something new that brought you joy. That's the magic of embracing impermanence. When you let go of what no longer serves you, you make room for new opportunities, new experiences, and new growth. Now, let's think about this idea more deeply. What if we could apply the principle of impermanence not just to big events, but to our everyday lives? Every day is filled with changes, small ones, yes, but changes nonetheless. How often do we resist these smaller changes, trying to maintain control over everything around us? What if instead we practiced letting go of our need for control, allowing things to flow as they will? How much more peaceful would our minds be if we could let go of our attachment to outcomes and simply flow with life as it comes? Embracing impermanence isn't about resignation, it's about understanding that change is the natural order, and instead of resisting it, we can learn to embrace it. Number 4. Create a worry period. You've probably had those moments when your mind seems to race, jumping from one worry to another, with no clear end in sight. It's easy to feel overwhelmed when our thoughts start spiraling out of control. You try to push them away, but they just keep coming back louder and more persistent. In fact, there's a sense of helplessness that can accompany these moments. But imagine if you could create a space for these worries, a time and place dedicated to them, instead of letting them consume you throughout the day. At first glance, the idea of intentionally setting aside time to worry might sound strange. Why would anyone want to schedule a worry period? especially when we're so used to avoiding stress at all costs. But what if this structured approach could actually help you manage those racing thoughts in a healthier way? Think about it right now. When your mind is scattered with worries, you might tell yourself to stop thinking about them. But the more you try to suppress them, the more intrusive they become. That constant push and pull with your thoughts only increases your anxiety. Instead, creating a worry period gives you permission to worry, but only during a specific time frame. For example, you could set aside 20 to 30 minutes each day, maybe in the evening or at a quiet moment during the day, where you allow yourself to focus solely on your worries. You acknowledge them, let them play out in your mind, and give them the attention they demand. But once that time is up, you close the door on those worries and move on with your day. This concept isn't about ignoring your problems or pretending they don't exist. It's about giving yourself a safe space to process your fears and anxieties while also creating boundaries around them. It's incredibly empowering to realize that you don't have to be consumed by your worries. You can control when and how you engage with them. It's like setting a timer on a runaway train. You can allow it to go full speed for a set time, but then you stop it, redirect it, and take back control. Have you ever noticed how your mind works when you're allowed to let go of the pressure? For instance, think back to a time when you gave yourself permission to take a break from your concerns. Maybe it was when you decided to stop stressing about a big presentation and took a walk outside. Suddenly, your mind wasn't occupied by all the what-ifs, and you were able to return to the task with a fresh perspective. The relief you felt wasn't just because you took a break, but because you learned how to disconnect from the ongoing mental chatter. Now, let's dive into the curiosity of what happens when you adopt this practice of creating a worry period regularly. Imagine, over time, having the ability to push your worries into their designated space, knowing you'll revisit them later, but not allowing them to take over your day. Wouldn't that give you a new sense of freedom? What if, in doing this, you found that most of your worries weren't as big or important as you initially thought? By creating a worry period, you could begin to gain mastery over your thoughts, shifting your mindset from being at the mercy of anxiety to controlling the flow of your mental space. 
Number 5. Break down overwhelming thoughts into actionable steps. How often have you found yourself staring at a task, feeling paralyzed by its size or complexity? You know what needs to be done, but the sheer weight of it is enough to make you want to turn the other way. Whether it's a project at work, a personal goal, or something in your daily life, we've all been there, facing something that feels so overwhelming that it makes it hard to even get started. But here's the thing, that overwhelming feeling doesn't have to control you. In fact, it's a signal that you need to break things down into more manageable parts. At first, it might seem too simple to work, but the power of breaking down overwhelming thoughts into actionable steps is incredible. Think about a time when you had a task that seemed impossible. Maybe it was cleaning your entire house, finishing a huge report, or even something like losing weight or saving money. The thought of completing such a big task felt daunting, but as soon as you broke it down into smaller, achievable tasks, whether it was starting with one room, writing just one paragraph, or setting aside $10 a week, it became less intimidating. You could actually see the path ahead. This idea is deeply rooted in the stoic principle of focusing on what you can control. When something feels too big or overwhelming, the best way to regain your footing is by focusing on small actions, one step at a time. By doing so, you shift your focus from the outcome, which can seem far off and unrealistic, to the process. It's a reminder that no matter how big the task, you can control what you do in the present moment. The key is to take action, even if it's just a small, seemingly insignificant step. Each small action you take moves you closer to the larger goal. Think back to a moment when you successfully broke down a task into smaller steps. Maybe it was a time when you were preparing for an exam and instead of cramming everything the night before, you created a study schedule, tackled a chapter a day and felt a sense of progress along the way. As you took each small step, you felt less stressed and more in control because the task no longer seemed like a mountain it became a series of manageable hills. Curiously, how much more could you accomplish if you made breaking things down a regular practice? What if you stopped focusing on the magnitude of the task ahead and instead focused on the first small step you could take? Wouldn't it feel empowering to know that every small action is building momentum? The trick is to recognize that it's not about the end result, but about making progress, no matter how small. This is where real change happens. Number six, shift your perspective to gratitude. It's easy to get caught up in the negative, especially when life isn't going the way we want it to. We've all had those moments when we feel stuck or frustrated, when the list of things to complain about seems endless. It's natural to focus on what's wrong, what we don't have, or what we wish was different. But here's the thing, when you shift your perspective to gratitude, everything changes. Gratitude isn't just about saying thank you for the good things in your life. It's a mindset, a lens through which you choose to view the world. Think about it. Have you ever had a day where, despite the challenges, you felt a deep sense of appreciation for something small? Maybe it was a moment of connection with a friend, a good cup of coffee, or the feeling of the sun on your face. When you focus on these small moments of joy, it's like the weight of everything else lightens. Gratitude allows you to step outside of the whirlwind of overthinking and see life through a more positive lens. Now, imagine if you practiced gratitude every day. Instead of focusing on what's wrong or what's missing, you began each day by reflecting on what's good in your life. It could be your health, your relationships, the roof over your head, or simply the fact that you woke up to another day. By making gratitude a daily practice, you retrain your mind to focus on the abundance around you rather than what's lacking. It's about recognizing the blessings you already have, no matter how small. Reflect on a time when you shifted your focus to gratitude. 
Maybe it was during a tough period when everything seemed to be going wrong, but somehow, by taking a moment to acknowledge the good, you started to feel better. That shift in perspective didn't make the challenges go away, but it helped you feel more at peace with them. It's in those moments of gratitude that we realize just how much we have, even when things aren't perfect. Curiously, what would happen if you incorporated gratitude into your daily routine, even on the hardest days? How much easier would it be to see the silver lining in situations that feel overwhelming? Gratitude is a powerful tool. It's free, available to everyone, and capable of transforming your mindset. So, let's explore the practice of gratitude and discover how shifting your focus can change your life for the better. Number seven, focus on effort, not outcome. How many times have you caught yourself obsessing over the result of something before you've even begun? We've all been there, right? The excitement of starting a new project or goal can quickly turn into anxiety as we fixate on the outcome. What if I fail? What if this doesn't work out? What if I don't get the results I expect? These questions can paralyze us before we even take the first step. But here's the truth. The outcome is beyond our control. We can't always predict or influence the result, but we can control the effort we put into the process. Focusing on effort instead of the outcome shifts our energy from external expectations to internal fulfillment. Instead of worrying about how others will perceive us or whether we will succeed, we focus on what we can do right now to give our best. Think back to a time when you achieved something that felt truly rewarding. Maybe it was a creative project, a workout goal, or a professional accomplishment. Did the outcome matter as much as the satisfaction of knowing you put in the effort? When you focus on the process and the effort you give, Success becomes less about achieving a specific result and more about the growth and fulfillment that comes with doing your best. Curiously, what would it look like if you stopped obsessing over results and simply gave your best effort every day? What if the satisfaction came from knowing you did everything you could, regardless of the outcome? Number 8. Cultivate mental discipline with stoic practices. When life throws challenges your way, how do you respond? Do you react impulsively, or do you take a moment to reflect and respond with intention? Stoic philosophy teaches us that we have the power to control our reactions, and by cultivating mental discipline, we can build resilience and inner strength. Through practices like mindfulness, meditation and self-reflection, you train your mind to be more present and less influenced by external circumstances. Stoicism teaches that our happiness is not determined by external events, but by our ability to control our inner state. When faced with adversity, you have the choice to remain calm and centered rather than giving in to anger, frustration or anxiety. By practicing stoic principles like self-control, temperance and rational thinking, you develop the mental discipline to stay grounded even in the most challenging situations. Think back to a time when you practiced self-discipline and were able to maintain your composure in a stressful situation. Perhaps it was a tense moment at work or a personal crisis, but you chose to take a deep breath, assess the situation and respond with clarity. That moment of discipline not only helped you handle the situation better, but also boosted your confidence in your ability to stay calm under pressure. Curiously, how could you incorporate stoic practices into your daily life? What if, every time a challenge arose, you paused for a moment to practice mindfulness or reminded yourself of the stoic principles that guide your actions? The more you practice mental discipline, the more resilient you become and the more empowered you'll feel to handle life's ups and downs. Number 9. Detach from future worries and anchor in the present. Have you ever found yourself anxiously thinking about the future, worrying about what might happen, how things will turn out, or whether you're making the right decisions? It's easy to get lost in the what-ifs of life, 
But what if the key to peace of mind lies not in controlling the future, but in fully embracing the present? Stoic philosophy teaches that we can't predict the future, nor can we control it. What we can control is our focus and our actions in the present moment. By detaching from future worries and grounding ourselves in the here and now, we free ourselves from the anxiety that often comes with uncertainty. Remember a time when you were fully immersed in a present moment. Maybe it was during a conversation with a friend, a walk in nature, or while working on a project you were passionate about. In those moments, time seemed to slow down and worries about the future faded away. This is the power of being present. Curiously, what would happen if you made it a habit to detach from future concerns and focus on the present moment? Wouldn't it feel liberating to know that you can handle whatever comes your way when it's time without the pressure of worrying about things that haven't even happened yet? Number 10. Train your mind to respond, not react. In moments of stress or conflict, it's easy to react impulsively. Your mind races, your emotions flare up, and before you know it, you've said or done something you regret. But what if you could train your mind to respond with intention rather than react from a place of emotion? Training your mind to respond rather than react requires practice. It involves creating a mental pause between stimulus and response, allowing you to think before you act. This pause gives you the space to choose a more thoughtful, deliberate response rather than being driven by immediate emotional impulses. Reflect on a time when you reacted without thinking. Maybe it was a heated argument or a stressful situation and your emotions got the best of you. Now, think about a time when you took a moment to pause, gather your thoughts and respond in a more thoughtful, calm manner. The difference in the outcome is often profound. When you respond instead of react, you take control of the situation and avoid unnecessary conflict. Curiously, how would your life change if you trained your mind to respond instead of react? What if every time you faced a challenge or confrontation, you paused for just a moment to gather your thoughts before responding? By practicing this response technique, You'll build mental strength and emotional intelligence, ultimately leading to more peaceful and productive outcomes. And there you have it, simple yet powerful ways to take control of your mind and transform how you handle life's challenges. Remember, it all starts with how you think and respond, and with the right practices, you can turn any situation into an opportunity for growth. If you're serious about changing your life and mastering your mind, then it's time to take action. Don't wait for life to control you. Become the master of your thoughts and emotions today. Drop a hundred in the comments if you've watched this far. This shows you're part of the 0.01% who actually finish what they start. You're ready to level up. If you're committed to your personal growth, make sure to subscribe to our channel and join a community of like-minded individuals. This is just the beginning. Let's continue growing together.